Hello everyone, it's Charlton. Please subscribe to my channel, tap the notification bell. I would appreciate it majorly. Coronavirus story, and you know, there's so many. Every, every story almost out there is now about coronavirus, so I only share some. But this one is about the, uh, the report that's you know, breaking right now about a JetBlue passenger who tested positive for coronavirus overnight last night. A flight going from New York City to Palm Beach International Airport, which I believe is right near Mar-a-Lago. Mar I think that's the airport, I'm not positive of that, that the president uses when he, when he goes you know, home for the weekend. In any event, um, somehow, uh, according to a passenger, and that's what this, this report's going to uh, show you, is they're speaking with somebody who was on the flight, and he kind of tells you everything as it unfolded. And he was able to find out a fair amount of information, but it seems that the passenger who was on the flight with a mask and gloves, along with his wife, who I think was sitting in a separate seat from him, you know, somehow um, received, basically had been tested for coronavirus a couple days prior to taking the flight, and, you know, while he, was, while he was in flight, he got a text, got the notification that the test results were positive. How the, how the uh, airline or the authorities were made aware of that is not totally clear to, that, clear to me. Because when the plane uh, landed, I, um, and I'll let him describe it. I'll stop in just a second. They brought the passenger to the back of the plane as they continued to discuss things with him and figure out how to deal with it. You know, and as the, all the other passengers are watching on, you know, and this went on for a couple hours, and then it continued even after they brought him to the gate, and people were um, questioned. I don't believe anybody was quarantined. In fact, Becky Quick, I think it's Becky Quick, you know, from CNBC, you know, uh, and the passenger himself, who they're speaking with, is, was sort of alarmed by that, that there were no other cautionary measures taken beyond, you know, um, isolating the one person who they knew for a fact was t you know, had tested positive for coronavirus. I'm not sure about his wife. I'll just let it play through. And uh, it's a fairly long interview. Who was on that flight? Scott Rodman. Uh, Scott, good morning. Thanks for calling in today. No problem. Good morning. How are you? Good. What, what, what happened last night? Yeah, it was you. Everything was up and the flight was about 75% full. And uh, I was sitting on a witness in the middle, and then a woman on the aisle, and a gentleman on the other aisle. And uh, he was wearing a mask and gloves. And there was really nothing to it, but then all of a sudden, as we as we landed, we got stuck. We were sitting on the tarmac for two hours, and uh, they pulled him to the back of the plane. They did not take him off the plane, and I happened to go use the restroom and saw him. He was just standing back there. Uh, then they got his wife and brought her to the back of the plane, and then finally we were able to disembark it and and get off. But then we had the health department there to, to talk to the rows that were in. Uh, close proximity to him and uh, and kind of went through the, the next steps, which were questionable. Did they say why they, do you have any idea why they actually checked him at that point? Was was he exhibiting a fever? Yeah, from, from, what we were told, from what we were told, he had, uh, he had been tested uh, for the virus two days ago <laughs> and got a text message on the plane while he was on the plane that he, uh, yeah, and, kind of wild. It's, you know, like it's, if you've gotten and gotten tested and you think there could be something wrong to go get on an airplane, it's, it's crazy. Um, but when he when he uh, was sitting on the plane, he got either a phone call or a text message saying that it was a positive test. Wow. Um, okay, that brings it to a whole new level. How are you feeling this morning? So far, feeling, feeling okay. Um, you know, we're, I think you know, we were all a little concerned, though, was as we got pulled into to a meeting room to meet with the Department of Health afterwards, and we were told that we're fine to go do whatever we want. Wait, they no didn't tell you to self-quarantine? You were sitting that close to yeah. him for, uh, I, I would say, what is it, a, a two and a half hour flight? Yeah. At least a three hour yeah. flight with at least a couple hours on the tarmac after that? Yes, and we were told that because he wasn't sneezing or coughing at all, that we're fine and we can go back, or they're gonna check in with us. And do you feel comfortable us. with that? Not at all. I, I'm, I'm visiting my parents in, in Florida and my mother's a diabetic and at risk and and to tell us that we're totally and i personally went over to the to the woman to the doctor and asked and explained my exact story and she said it's a personal decision if you want to stay with them and i said that's you know, i need a professional opinion and she said i would stay try and keep your distance but if you exhibit any symptoms at all to leave them leave the house well at that point maybe it's too late but what 
you said you went back to the bathroom. Okay, he wasn't coughing, he wasn't sneezing, not necessarily a way he was wearing a mask, but you went back to the yeah. bathroom. Had he gone back to the bathroom? Are you touching any of the same surfaces? It's certainly possible. Uh, he, was, he was, again, he was just standing in the back there, and, and uh, I, I don't know what he was touching throughout the flight. I, I, I don't know. I, yeah, it, and that's what's making it scary is that we're not getting him. In, the information we're, we were told last night does not match the information that you're hearing from the professionals throughout the country on television and in, in, the, uh, in the papers. What did Jeff Lou say to you? I don't know, Jeff Lou hasn't said anything. They were, the, the captain maybe came on me the whole time, maybe three or four times and didn't give us any information. Um, we were surrounded by, by police cars and ambulance and they wouldn't let us go into the terminal, but nobody was telling us anything. The flight attendants were, I, I didn't even see the flight attendants. We got yelled at multiple times that we needed to sit down because we were all starting to stand up just because you're on the tarmac for two hours, you, you gotta stretch a little bit. And they kept telling us we had to sit down, but there was no, nothing from JetBlue whatsoever. So no health officials and no one from JetBlue, no one has <laughs> offered you any way to not stay with your parents? No one has made that. No one has, uh, no one has done that. I called the, uh, the COVID-19 hotline last night when I got back. I found it on the Palm Beach Health Department website. He told me that I have to leave and call the health department this morning, um, that they, they, you know, they didn't really have much information. And, uh, and I'm supposed to be getting a phone call from the health department today to check in on me to see how I'm feeling. Are you staying with your parents? Uh, fortunately, they have a, a separate uh, guest house at their at their house, so I'm able to stay out there where where I'm not in is, is direct contact with them. Uh, and now we're just trying to figure out the next steps and wait to hear what the professionals think we should be doing. I think I just heard you cough. How are you feeling? <laughs> so far, feeling okay. Um, you know, trying trying to not let my mind play tricks on me, and, and uh, but there's definitely uh, definitely a nervousness and and yeah. and just kind of the unknown. We're we're uh, you know we don't I don't know what to do. Scott, it sounds like you were taking all the, the best precautionary measures that you could possibly take. Um, I want to wish you well and hope you will check in with us and let us know how things are going. If you hear back from the health department, from JetBlue, or um, just let us know how things are going. But we appreciate your call today. I certainly will. I appreciate you having me. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Scott Rodman, again, a passenger on the JetBlue thing that was coming from New York. Yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. There's thousands of stories on the coronavirus and things are just, you know, exploding everywhere. I mean, with the NBA uh, canceling the season or postponing it for now and just story after story after story. But there you get a firsthand uh, account from somebody in a, in a situation like that. And that's, you know, in a free society, I mean, this is, that's what's going to happen is you can't control the movements of every single person, even it, it was particularly the way we're handling things now. So, um, you know, unfortunately, I, I think this is just the beginning and we'll see, you know, we'll just see how things develop uh, hour by hour, you know. All right. Thanks for watching my videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like down below and uh, I will see you in the next video. Later, man.